and we are here for another episode of the Stucky and Augmented Reality Podcast. Again, I'm your host, Stephen Christian, and well, I guess I guess I would be considered the host if it's just like a reflective podcast for just me. It is kind of like a, a audio video diary, uh, but um, on this podcast, again, I'm just sort of sharing updates as a medical student during the pandemic uh, that is also exploring and educating people on the future of augmented reality specifically. Um, you could put it under the XR stuff. I don't really do VR, but um, but it's really all about just uh, introducing people to uh, you know new ways to make it through life by being creative and using technology. Uh, to help better their lives, right? And so, welcome to the Stucky and Augmented Reality Podcast. Woo! <laughs> Eventually, I'll I'll have like a jingle or something, but uh, we're not there yet. You know, I got I got you know medical school test to do and study and stuff, right? So, uh, you know, it, it's it's been a uh, since the last episode, it's been really really interesting because uh, a lot of stuff like a lot of stuff seems to happen all the time. But a lot of stuff like did happen uh, since my last podcast. Uh, obviously, um, you know, going through medical school and and that's its own its own situation. But I also did the Augmented World Expo, and I also did the uh, Unity Certified Instructor Summit, and so those were two things that I did over the past week. Uh, yeah, over the past week. That, uh, that were really, really cool. And then, you know, like, obviously, like, one of the things that I try to do is be tapped in with the community and be tapped in with, you know, the world around me. So uh, this week in particular has been, uh, there's been a lot of unfortunate news for for uh, people that just sort of follow trending topics, whether it's hip hop, social, current events, and stuff like that, stuff that's uh, race related, which in American society, like everything is race related. Um, you can't really get around it. It's just sort of ingrained in it. And, uh, and because of those race relations, there's these disparities that sort of play out in front of our faces. And so, um, and then people tend to like use that stuff as, as ammo for a, you know, a less than ideal agenda. And so, uh, and so, yeah, you know, the, I mean, the, the big thing really obviously is like every day is med school day. Uh, and so uh, I have, I think it, I think I'm getting used to the pace of medical school. Uh, not used to, I, I wouldn't say like used to the pace, but I, I think that what I'm learning from medical school and coming from, uh, you know, like being introduced to the tech industry and, and being in sports and being in, uh, you know, being a freelancer in entertainment. The thing that I'm like learning about the medical field or like just sort of pursuing medicine and trying to get to that like ideal role as a health professional, as a, as a doctor, I'm learning that it's, uh, it's a journey. And it's a journey in these like very, uh, in these ways that are very reminiscent of like my athletic journey where um, I like the majority of my day is spent um, studying. The majority of my day is spent uh, preparing for the unknown. And the thing that I've learned that, that, that I pull from sports is that for the, my 12 years of playing sports, I, it was really diff. Like I, I wasn't working. I mean, I ended up working like, you know, like temp jobs and creative jobs, like, uh, later on, but like I wasn't working and most of my time was spent training and preparing for games or situations to use the skills that I've developed over time. Right. And so what that means is that every waking moment, I'm always trying to get better because you will ultimately never really be prepared for the exact moment that you're training for. You are acquiring skills and, and uh, becoming more comfortable reacting in situations that, uh, that you have possibly be, been exposed to. And because there's so many situations out there, you're always trying to get better. 
uh, there's always something better that you could do. And uh, and then when you get to a game, you know, like you never know when, you know, you, they always say like you never know when the ball will find you. And so always be ready for, you know, when the ball is ready for you because you never know what will happen. You don't know what's going to happen two minutes from now. You don't know what's going to happen next quarter. And so, uh, but you have to train in a way that like you prepare for everything so that you could do well and you could, uh, and you could have highlights and stuff like that. And so with medicine, uh, a lot of the things that I find myself doing are just, I'm studying for any possible situation that I could be tested on and any possible situation that I would have with like a standardized patient. And there's all these procedures that we need to know, different assessments that we need to do, uh, different things we need to look out for and we need to be aware of. And there's different things we actually need to ask. You know, we uh, in many ways, like it, it feels like, uh, you know, I'm, in, I'm, a, I'm a journalist when I, I go into the clinic and I'm trying to uh, talk and, and, and care for people because you have to ask them certain questions so that they, you know, they understand that you're just trying to help them. You're not trying to get over on them. Right. And so most of my time, yeah, I've just spent just training or studying or prepping for what may happen. And that leads to me not being able to work or not being able to do anything else, but really just dedicate my time to it. And that investment ultimately will be like the payout in the long run when, you know, I have my own practice or I get into residence and stuff, residency and stuff. But, uh, but right now it's just not the case. And, and so I like this feeling that I have of like, I feel like I'm getting used to it. I think it's just, I feel like I'm connecting to previous experiences that I've had already and seeing that there's some parallels. And so when they say like, oh yeah, you know, like athletes, you know, medicine is looking for athletes. It's like, yes, they, I could see how you, you know, they make that connection. The only problem is that most of the athletes that, you know, would benefit from these opportunities are essentially the ones in revenue generated sports like football and basketball that are used to the stress, but they probably don't have the grades and all these things sort of these, you know, these disparities sort of play out and that, and, and that's why, uh, this sort of like ideal dream of like an athlete going into like healthcare is, is not really feasible with this current society, uh, and the current structure. And I, I like mentioned the, like the current society and, and current structure, because, um, a lot of the stuff that I've been focused on is, uh, institutions and how to combat certain structural problems with, uh, creativity and knowledge dissemination and so uh and so one of the things that i did uh obviously was doing the augmented world expo and in the augmented world expo um i got this opportunity to talk with uh be on a panel with the vice president of unity technologies or the vice president of social impact and education for unity technologies uh, jessica lindell uh, and then two other black creators. One is uh, Damian McDuffie, who created Black Terminus AR, and he's also the archivist for the Black Panther Party. And then also Lady Phoenix, who is the uh, founder of the Yes Universe, and she was the one that worked on the uh, Brianna Brianna's Garden, which is the Brianna Taylor um, like immersive experience that uh, pays homage to Brianna Taylor. And, uh, and me, I worked on the George Floyd project that, uh, that, you know, people saw like that I did in Portland. And so it was, it was like the, the purpose of her talk was really talking about confronting systemic racism and creating safe spaces in real life, uh, in, in real life with AR. And, you know, it, it's the, the reason we did that, the reason that thing, uh, we were talking about this is because it was an opportunity to uh, address systemic issues with creativity and education. It's really just exposure and showing what the potential of uh, what black people have potential to do uh, with the resources that they have available. And I, th I think that's really powerful because when we're talking about agency or autonomy, these things that like, you know, these sort of like Republican talking points of like, 
oh, you know, they want their people want to keep their freedoms and they want to be able to do the things and protect themselves and all that stuff. Right. Uh, despite not being in any real danger and most of the danger is fabricated. Uh, when we're talking about black and brown communities, people that are uh, affected by these structural issues, there's a real danger of not knowing what to do in situations. When you don't have knowledge and, and you don't have resources and access to tools, you're in a very real danger. And so when you have a computer, but you don't know how to utilize it, that can be a life or death situation for people that uh, may be underinsured, maybe have limited you know, resources to contact people. You know, and we've seen many a times where a simple tweet has would change somebody's life or save somebody's life because they would they were they have access to information and stuff now. And so when we're talking about it, when we're on the stage talking about these things, it, it, it felt really good to sort of like connect with people, albeit, you know, connecting with people in real life. But we're connecting with people and we're sharing ideas on a, a international stage about how the work that is being done uh, in real time to to address these issues. And it goes beyond just, oh, yeah, what is the what is the version of Unity that you're using or what software language do you know or, you know, how are you rendering this out? Is it real time or is it, you know, using something else? Uh, it's 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 talking about the impact that these ideas have using the tools in society as they're growing. And so we're not talking about, oh, yeah, you know, like there's a multi-billion dollar industry existing already and we have we need to fill these roles. So we need to teach people how to code. It's like, no, we need to we're, we're teaching people how to how to develop critical thinking skills by uh, to address real problems in their lives as they're experiencing those real problems. And so um, and I think that, that it's it, it just felt really good to sort of share a stage with people that we're doing. We had our own lanes. But our lanes were worked in parallel and they overlapped in so many ways that uh, that it just felt good um, to just sort of be a part of that and experience it. And so, you know, aside from that, right, I got to just go to the Augmented World Expo and and that mess was cool. Like that was really awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm upset because I could only get the first day off the day of my talk to go because I had to do a standardized patient assessment in Reno. And so, uh, and so I was in Santa Clara. It was awesome. It was like a lot hotter than I expected. You know, I got to see some family cause obviously I'm from the Bay area and, uh, and I got to connect with people on Twitter that I didn't think I would ever meet in person. And it was weird because I would talk to like, when I would meet people, I'd be like, Oh yeah, you know, my name is Steve, blah, blah. I'll start talking to people. And then they would mention like a project or something that they did. And I'd be like, huh? I remember seeing that on Twitter. I didn't realize you did that. And then they'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, like I knew you look familiar. And, and, and it would be that sort of thing where, like, you're able to connect the profile picture and, you know, your your handle, your uh, Twitter handle and uh, the work that you do with the actual person. And, and that felt really good. Uh, it felt real. Like it felt like, you know, this was a real thing. It wasn't just some like random scam uh, of just like people just hiding behind, uh, you know, like profile pictures and stuff like it just felt real and uh, and that was nice uh, uh but i didn't get to go to like the expo and stuff because they only had the expo the second and third day and so now that i know that the expo uh augmented world expo will be in the summertime i'm definitely going and i'm definitely trying to uh speak at it again so that i don't have to pay fifteen hundred dollars to 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 get a ticket uh, and so that that's the goal, you know, speaking at Augmented World Expo again. Um, but, you know, after that, uh, Unity reached out to me and they reached out to me to um, uh, to speak at their, uh, their Unity Certified Instructor Summit. So I spoke at the Augmented World Expo last week, uh, the week of the 14th, and then I uh, spoke at the, uh, the Unity Certified Instructor Summit the week of the 21st. And... Uh, and and that was really really awesome because i got to meet ben radcliffe or i didn't get to meet him but like i got to share the stage the virtual stage with uh with thomas winkley and uh ben radcliffe who are you know sort of like creme de la creme unity instructors they're the people that like you know if unity is doing something uh, uh to benefit the community 
you know, they're probably going to have them involved in it. And like the the Unity Rask, like the Real Time Rascal series that Ben Radcliffe did, I mean, like that's just been a big inspiration for me uh, going into Unity. And so what they asked me to do, because they, they saw that I um, am doing a lot of, I don't have enough time to like s teach a lot of courses as a Unity certified instructor, but I need to maintain like my cer certificate by like doing education related stuff. And so I, I, I sort of devised this plan of like, what if I just do that through social platforms? And so it's asynchronous and it's these like bite-sized bits of, of projects and exploration and, and information, uh, bite-sized bits of teaching that, uh, that show, allows me to disseminate knowledge in a digestible way that doesn't require, doesn't require so much of a commitment from me and doesn't require a commitment from others. Uh, if they want to learn more, they could go and they could see all the courses that I have that I've spent a lot of time doing pre-medical school. But now it's a matter of how do I be efficient in my teaching process as a medical student that also has 20 other things going on, right? And so I have, you know, 30 minutes to an hour to devote to something, but I don't have four hours to teach a course, right? And so they were like, hey, you know, like we really like the stuff that you're doing and we want to see if you wanted to be involved with it. So like, you know, uh, we have a uh, we have an opening just a uh, you know pitch a pitch a talk that you want to do and and kind of go from there and I was like okay cool like I like this is this is like during that time it was you know I still had a little bit of this like imposter syndrome of like you know do I really know what I'm doing or you know it, like it like I feel like I'm always trying to just figure it out as I go and so uh, and then I like reflect on it and be like, OK, this was good and I'll continue doing it. Or if it didn't work out, then I see what I could do better. Right. But like it, it's I like it's something I just sort of come up with an idea and then I and then I uh, put my time and energy to it, my uh, dedication to it, my focus to it. And then and then I put it out there and then I sort of move on to the next thing and, and see what I've learned from it and how I could improve on it. Right. And so when like it, this forced me to sort of look back at my approach to why I create things or why I explore ideas. And it really came down to um, really just looking at what my background is and, and what what are the things that I actually do uh, and being really critical of it, not being buzzwordy, but like actually looking at the specific examples and using those as an example of of why I'm building a community or why, you know, I'm getting opportunities. And so I, uh, I ended up titling the talk interdisciplinary approaches to innovative projects. And, uh, the reason I did that is because for me, I, I sort of dealt with this stigma of being a generalist and the stigma of being a generalist means that I'm not a master, you know, I'm sort of like a jack of all trades, a master of none. And when you're in the creative industry, there's a there's one role for one specific uh, skill set. And so it doesn't matter if you know storyboarding or if it doesn't matter if you know, you know, illustration. If you are an animator, you need to be the best animator for that job. Who cares what other skills you have? Right. And so it's very focused on being a master of one skill set. Uh, if you're great at animating hair, you do hair for your career. You know, if you're great at um, 3D modeling, you do 3D modeling, uh, and that's your career. You may have other interests, but like your f career is focused on one specific thing. And I think that's antithetical to like where the creative community is going because often you don't have, you don't know what you're good at until you try a whole bunch of different things and then you narrow it down based off of what you want to do. And often when you, because there's smaller studios now that are creating work because tools are available, you have to pick up a lot of different things. If you if you start a company, if you start your own studio, you're doing all the different roles that are required for it. And and you know a tool like Unity uh, allows you to do that a lot quicker. Uh, you don't need to have this robust knowledge of of every single uh, skill set in order to put together a, a two minute video with a couple of characters in it. Right. You just need to know how to use the tools and approach it. So it's really about approaching those ideas. And so it really came down to like me saying like I combine art and technology to create and, and entertain. Uh, I combine art and technology to create entertaining and 
educational experiences. It's all about creating that experience. And so I use an interdisciplinary approach, which is really just about just like thinking outside the box. And then I use this concept that I pulled from Afrofuturism, which is uh, exploring the what if and reimagining an alternate reality that uh, challenges preconceived notions. And that preconceived notion is that you have to be a master of something in order to have a flourishing career. It's like, what if you had a variety of skill sets and you had and you knew how to use the tools properly? What would you be able to create and what ideas would you be able to explore? Right. And so I really addressed like I initially addressed like, OK, the reason we use Unity, the way we build our skill set now is you take courses and you have these technical skills and you create a portfolio and that portfolio you use to apply for jobs uh, based on your technical experience. But, you know, now the nowadays, like you make a YouTube video and now you have a career based off of your own creativity. And so it's like, you know, at this point, Unity isn't just like a game engine. It's not just it's a tool for you to explore ideas and, you know, being able to reimagine or think of ideas to to explore is really that hindering factor. And like as an as an instructor, I always get as a black instructor, I would say as a black instructor, I always get these questions of, you know, how do I get started and how do you come up with interesting project ideas? Those two things are the things that I always get. Um, and I think it's and it tends to become from like black students or uh, students of color that ask me that. And so it was like, like my, my focus is always on that. It's like, how do you come up with ideas to explore? Because you could get the, you could know, you could learn how to click, you know, this or click that, but how, when you click those things, what happens? Like, why are you doing that? Uh, that becomes the thing that people get lost on or get tied to. And so I just sort of told them a story of, uh, you know, just like how I sort of go about uh, this organic process and it really comes down to like, you know, I'm typically just stressed out So I go on TikTok. I look for you know I just sort of stumble and watch videos like everybody else I'll stumble on something and then I'll just like, you know participate in it. It's typically a dance And so I'll just like do a dance and post it on TikTok. But as a creator, it's like, okay How can I take that to the next level? And so then I'll just sort of take the references that I have, take the things that inspire me to do the dance and say, what if I reimagine it as a, as an animated, as an animated video rather than a live action video. And so I go through, I have a motion capture suit. I'll do the dance and stuff. And then I'll just add it to some uh, 3d characters and, and I'll post that as the video. And so then I'll have a live action video and I'll have a uh, animated video. But then the next thing is like, okay, how can I push the envelope for it? How can I take this from just being a, a live action trend to being an immersive experience and, and then build it out and, and create bridge the gaps between the animated and the, uh, the digital and the physical world. Right. And, uh, and so then it really comes down to having those 3d characters that I did the animated video with and placing them in the real world and then recording it in real time as if they're really there and uh, and being able to do that to contribute to a TikTok trend uh you need to have a certain skill set to do that and pull that off and if you know that skill set then you are ready for any job opportunities of people that need that skill set and so you're able to tap in with the community and so your portfolio is just you being creative and you know like your portfolio is essentially like ingrained in sort of like your lifestyle where you create all these different things and uh, and you put them out and then opportunities come from you just living your life and being creative. And that and that is uh, that is something that like I want to see from us as 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 people, as creators. But specifically, like that's what I that's what I'm used to coming from football and coming from sort of the hip hop community and stuff. Right. You know, we have our lives and stuff like that, but like what we enjoy to do is we love to rap, we love to work out, we love to play basketball, you know? And if you're good, you get the opportunity to to move on to the next level and be a pro, you know? And it shouldn't it shouldn't be it should be like those nuances should be ingrained into the the opportunities or the landscape of technology uh 
and and you just don't really see that as much now or you don't see the opportunities like that so that, that's something that i just want to create and encourage and from there it just it just it builds from there right because like once you have these experiences you had these deliverables and going through this creative journey you have these deliverables of you have project demos you have creative time lapses you have step-by-step -step guides one minute tutorials walkthrough blogs online courses all based off of you just being creative and then sharing how you create and uh, ultimately like it it becomes this sort of this vicious cycle that that's beneficial because you get to do the market research of like what are people interested in and what do people enjoy you get to learn how to develop projects and products that allow you allow you to package your creativity and possibly sell it and then ultimately you're building this community in real time that as you learn you share with others and then you inspire other people to learn and you know in this in this in many ways this creating a safe space for non-traditional creators to explore new ways of creating with technology you know and i think this this really parallels with like the thing that i talked about with augment world expo where it's all about creating it's all about working with people to um to improve and inspire and educate and so if if you are you know being selfless and you're in your uh, being a part of the community you're contributing to society in a beneficial way like you know educators do uh, then then more opportunities will come to you and and you will have a greater impact on other people and uh, and that 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 really stood out to me and you know it, it I think it like going through this process allowed me to uh, really take a step back and revisit a lot of the old work that I thought that I did you know and uh, and a lot of the other videos that I did where it's like when I when I look at a lot of my old projects, I could come up with a what sort of a, a what if thesis of you know uh, the general concept, the general idea of you know a certain project or a picture or whatever is this you know what if I did this what would happen and just some examples that I used were just I, I made a picture of uh, of my main characters Roscoe and and Cadbury and they're just watching TV. Right. So it's just a poster of them watching TV. So it's like, what if you watched their favorite show with them? What would that experience be like? And I just created an AR experience where you're literally watching the show that they're watching. You know, I'm a big fan of Yu-Gi-Oh. And so, you know, we all know that like Yu-Gi-Oh is pretty much just an augmented reality card game. That's what it's based off of, just an AR card game. And so it's like, what if you brought the Yu-Gi-Oh card game to life and augmented a, a you know, a Yu-Gi-Oh card? And then, you know, obviously, because of the background that I have with uh, the George Floyd project, you know, that was really focused around what if I installed a 30 foot monument in the middle of downtown without needing a permit? You know, what would that experience be like? And what if I made it larger than life? It, I made it more dynamic than that. Uh, and, and really exploring like what those things can what those things can be and what those things can do. Uh, it just I, I feel fortunate that I am I'm able to speak and, and say and talk about these things right and so the things that like the things that I sort of narrowed it down to is just really just sort of exploring reimagining bridging gaps with connections and disciplines that you already have and then being able to create uh, give yourself time to create and then contributing to the to society and contributing to the community with those creations, revisiting those creations and seeing like, how can you turn these into learning, uh, learning objectives and how could you, uh, what skills were needed to, uh, you know, explore this process and create these deliverables. And then ultimately, you know, just like putting it out as educational stuff, right? Like what are learning objectives? What are assignments that you could take people on or give people to help them develop these skills so that they could create these projects and then apply these skills to the projects that they want to create when they have their own ideas that they naturally stumble upon. And so, uh, and so it's, uh, it's really just how to craft cool projects others will want to learn by integrating a interdisciplinary approach to problem solving. And that's all that is, you know, and it, it's, uh, it's something that I... I think it's something that as uh, somebody that has a master in interdisciplinary studies uh, over the past 10 years, that's something I've been just exploring. How do I utilize this degree and this skill set that I have uh, in, a, uh, in a growing market that doesn't realize that, you know, 
this is the answer, you know? Um, and it, it, it's been difficult, obviously, but it, it it's something that I think is like my life's calling. And, and I'm very fortunate to, uh, well, I appreciate the, the direction that I took and the things that I did uh, to get to this point because I'm, I'm starting to see it pay off in the end. Uh, but one of the things that, um, you know, as I, as I have these like high, like high highs, um, they, they tend to come with these, uh, unfortunate lows. And, and so like, as I'm finding a, a deeper path with, uh, finding an integration with healthcare and, and, um, and XR, and I guess one of the, the I guess the reason I say that is because, uh, when I was at the Augmented World Expo, I got to see a talk with the Mayo Clinic and what they're doing to explore uh, immersive technology. It's called immersive healthcare. And uh, when I mentioned like, oh yeah, I wanna find ways to integrate the art and technology into healthcare. Uh, they were do they're doing, like they're doing it. It's the Mayo Clinic, right? Like they're, they're like creme de la creme, right? So, uh, you know, I, I got to share the stage with the people that are doing the the innovative stuff at the Mayo Clinic with immersive healthcare. And so, you know, I put I put out a, you know, I, I put out a, a tweet, uh, like a public tweet and was like, hey, you know, like it would be great to meet you guys. And, and I want to connect with you guys. And hopefully that turns into like a project where I get to work, do some stuff with the Mayo Clinic. So we're just putting that out to the luck gods. But um, but like, you know, when I came back from the Augmented World Expo and sort of did all these different things, I was inspired. I, I was I was sitting on cloud nine because I, I felt like this is where things are coming together in this way that I know will be beneficial for people. And it's inspiring for me because like I'm getting answers to things that I had questions to, but I didn't know how to ask or who to ask. And so they're just sort of coming to me. But and, and I'm trying to do these to address very specific problems, stru structural issues that I've experienced as a black person. Uh, that is trying to go through healthcare and that is trying to go through all these different things that have that have had issues uh just because i'm i'm a black person uh navigating them right and so we have like two things that sort of happened this week right um the rittenhouse trial where you know a a white guy like he his his parents or mom or whatever drives them across the state lines to another another state uh gives them a gun and just says hey you know do you and uh and having that play out as a the way that it did it it makes me feel some type of way because as a black person, I'm worried about being mis like misconceived and being judged on things that I might do. And I feel like I can use technology to uh, to make life safer for me so that people don't think that I'm up to something else and that I'm going to harm them. But to see a to see this whole situation play out where this person went to a situation in in this sort of guise of trying to make things better, but not make things better for people, just make things better for somebody's property and for somebody's money. Literally, you know, you're not you're not you you're not running around protecting, you know, people. You're over there protecting brick and mortar buildings, right? And to see that, to see it all play out in a way that like we kind of expected, where it's like, okay, you know, white guy has a gun, he, you know, is gonna play the whole self-defense thing, and and then he shoots somebody and kills somebody, and then people respond to him. And, and try to take him down and then use that as a as a further excuse to self-defend himself, right? If you see somebody shooting somebody and killing them on the street, 
you know, somebody shot and killed me, I would hope somebody would run after that person and try to get them, not just let them run free. And to see how that was used as a as further excuse to kill more people and then embolden a whole community that happens to be pro-life, quote unquote, and say that they deserved it. it it's just, you know, it, it's unfortunate. Like, it, it's unfortunate to see how, you know, black people have to, black people in the society uh, have to always give people, always have to combat these stereotypes and and make sure these things don't happen. But then other people... can literally do whatever the heck they want, you know, live up to a stereotype, all these things, and not be held accountable for it. And it and, and it just, it further just got even worse when, you know, like, as I said, I'm a, just a, a big uh, fan of hip hop. And to see, you know, young Dolph just die, you know, get murdered because he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. It like it, it's it's an unfortunate situation, and and part of it is like these things happen in these in these areas that you know people were like oh yeah I need to protect myself I need to do this I need to do this so uh, so that I don't get taken advantage of but then they start harming people in the process, and it's like this it's such a it's a it's a double standard you know it's I wouldn't even say it's a double standard it's 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 just sinister that these things could happen and so it's like for me how do I like how do I navigate all this stuff and how do I educate people and connect with people and inspire people despite these things that are happening right it's like when I when I go and I try to talk to a, a group of black students and I'm like hey you know like you could get into AR and XR and you could this could change your life and then they they see the freaking stuff on the news and the stuff that's happening and you know it's like who who am i to sit here and say oh yeah you just need to you know open up your computer and just make some stuff right when when there's very real things that you know can can hinder that progress because all this stuff could be for nothing if somebody just shoots you in the face like that that's just what it comes down to and and people understand that people feel that and so it's like, you know, half the time people are just trying to get by. They're not trying to, you know, get an investment and, you know, work five years to, to build up to something like, like things aren't promised like that. And so it, it's a, it, like, I, I think the, the responsibility that like creators like me have is to, how do, is to be transparent in how to navigate that as you're trying to pursue your dreams and bring ideas to life. Uh, and, and in many ways, like these experiences are tend to be those ideas that you want to bring to life because these are the things that you feel they're on your mind. They're, they're what people are talking about. They're, they're, they're a way to cope with and, and navigate. And so in order to do that, you have to, you have to, you have to give yourself the grace and you have to give yourself the opportunity to. And so it's like, you know, based off of this, I would I would explore a project and I would teach people how to create uh, within the context of these types of ideas, uh, because, you know, this experience is not uh, this. Is, your educational experiences are not in the vacuum. They're affected by the things that you see on TV. They're affected by the things that happen in society. And I think in many ways, people will use coding and technology and art as a way to escape society when they work hand in hand in many ways they inspire each other right we see a movie we see a science fiction movie from the 80s and now we have that that same technology that was in the movie in our pockets right now and the ground basis is technology the you know the inspiration was society it was culture and 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 so i think you know the work that i want to do or want to continue doing is really exploring that intersection not bridge the gaps because there's already connections there 
it's exploring those intersections so that people have very real and specific reference points uh, that they get pulled to so that they can further build on those ideas and build, be creative and stuff. And so, you know, like it, it's, it's been a very formative, really a very formative uh, couple of weeks for me uh, because you know, like it, it feels like there's always something like I'm like I'm grinding, I'm grinding, I'm grinding, trying to like figure out, you know, school and teaching and all these different things that are happening at once. Um, and then things are always happening. They're always happening. But um, what I'm learning and this is something that like I am growing, like I'm appreciating more and more. It's just being creative and giving myself myself the opportunity to create and make a podcast and explore these ideas and put them out there and then uh and then sort of connect with people and connect with the community i i get these responses back that that really that really helped me uh really helped me because last week or yesterday the day before that you know i we had like 15 lectures this week and these 15 lectures we're on like pulmonary system and like the renal system. And you're talking about emphysema, you know, obstructive lung diseases, all these things that are happening. And we're sort of on the cusp of, of flu season and stuff. And so we're learning about all this, all this dense material and we're gonna be tested on it. Uh, and it's 15 lectures, right? And, so, and each one of these lectures is at least like an hour to two hours long. So that's just 30 hours worth of material. And it takes like two, you know, one to two hours to review the material and like make note cards and stuff. Right. So I like it. It's been a rough week for me and like I'm like mentally exhausted. And so being able to like just sort of take a step back and, and create something and and reflect on the experiences that I had uh, to hopefully inspire others to just keep doing it. It feels good. And so one of the things that I uh, one of the things I got just uh, um you know, a, a physician that had a podcast just reached out to me and was just like, hey, you know, like I uh, wanted to see how you're doing. You know, I, I like the things that you're doing. Keep doing them. Um, and, you know, it's really good to see you sort of adjusting to it and and being able to stay up to date with the things that you're that's going on. And it's like, OK, you know, like often you don't think that like people are watching. Or you don't think that people are engaging with your stuff because you really you just see a number. You don't know what uh what's happening behind it and so to see that you know people are reaching out or they're responding or there's comments on it uh it just it feels like a, it's you know i started a conversation and uh by starting that conversation people were able to uh, engage in the conversation have that conversation continue and um and it just feels good it just feels really really good and so you know with with the with this podcast i'm trying to get a little more of like a format for it going uh but again it was a it was a rough week um but you know obviously like what you could expect with this is just you know medical school updates just recent projects and events that like i was a part of you're definitely going to get some current topics and stuff because i think that you can't have you can't think you know you can't be forward thinking if you uh aren't tapped in with society and the community and and so you know being able to really explore those things as they're happening is is very valuable to this whole creative journey and then ultimately you know having a i i still have this weekly web comic that i that i do with the willamette weekly and so i think i'm gonna start integrating that into into it because it, it gives me an opportunity to actually like make the comics and not make them last minute because i tend to do that and just really reflect on like why i created that comic that week um as you can imagine it's probably this week is going to be some written house related one right and so uh and so that that that's just something i look forward to doing just to sort of just keep everything together and then you know i, I was looking at uh from the unity certified summit uh like reflecting on a lot of the projects that I've done that I'll just post a video and move on to them and not really talk about them. And so really just revisiting those projects and reflect on what that creative journey was for me and, and why I just, you know, what was the purpose of like making those things? Because the projects that I posted on Twitter, those are the things that got me the opportunities that I got today. 
like hands down if i didn't post stuff on twitter i you would not care about steve as a as an xr creator uh, I would not be doing anything with Unity. I would not be doing speaking at Augmented World Expos. I would not be doing any of that stuff if I did not make projects and just post them on Twitter. And so, uh, and so I think that they, I need to, well, I, I would like to just give them a little more respect than, the, than what I've been giving them. And, uh, and, that, and that's just the goal. And then uh, ultimately, you know, um, like I'm constantly getting DM, like, direct messages and emails to, um, you know, just from students and, and people just talking about random things that either inspired me or, you know, had me think about things a little differently. And, uh, and so I think I, I'll start, I'll start integrating that stuff too. So if you're watching, if you're listening, uh, definitely post comments and, and send me messages that way I could, uh, you know, integrate those into, into the show. And then ultimately it's just, you know, there's going to be prompts and like I did with the last episode and, uh, just sort of keeping you up to date with all these different upcoming events. And so, um, and so just on, be on the lookout for everything again, you know, like and follow and do all the, do all the stuff. I, I always hate saying that cause I feel like I'm, I'm begging for attend begging for support, but, um, but yeah, you know, just support the way you want to, um, getting ready to come up with the Kickstarter uh, for Island Fever AR, really super excited about it. Um, trying to really make have an impact in a, in a very specific way, and then uh, and then I'll be doing a like a holiday flash sale because uh, I have um, budget money that I, I need to to spend, and I and I want to build this sort of creative community with the things that I already have. So you know, I just want to make things accessible and uh, and inspire people going into holiday. To, uh, to create some interesting and, and fun things. And, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm just sort of available to help people do that. And so without further ado, you know, really, really appreciate it. I always joke because I always try to say I'm going to do a, a 20 minute episode and then I look at the clock and that mess is an hour. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, really appreciate, uh, all the support up until this point. And, um, yeah, yeah. You know, just create, conquer and, and try to, you know, have a have a good, lovely day until the next episode. And so without further ado, I will leave you guys at that. Adios.